I've made over seven figures selling t-shirts alone. And since t-shirts are still one of my best selling products, in this video, I'm going to show you my exact process for how I find unsaturated niches and the four methods that I use to create dozens of trademark free designs in just a few minutes. It's been a year since my last tutorial. And since then, a lot has changed. Now we have AI generators that can make entire designs for us. And we have better methods for product research so we can see what's working right now today. This strategy is how I've made designs like what are on these listings that have made me hundreds of sales and continue to generate thousands of dollars. But even new shops like this one that opened less than one year ago are already making tens of thousands of sales because they're using this exact design strategy. T-shirts are still easy to sell. We just have to have the right designs and not just any designs that get a couple sales. We want designs that last, that will continue to get sales for years. The whole process is very simple. We'll start by researching to see what ideas and concepts are working right now today so that we don't waste our time. Then we'll run a simple trademark check so that we don't run into any issues. And finally, we'll use the four design methods to make dozens of designs targeting these low competition, proven to work niches. At the end of the video, I'll even throw in some free bonuses that make your life a lot easier. There's only three things that we need to get started. First is a computer with internet access. Second is to click subscribe. And third is a program called Figma. Now you could use Canva if you're more comfortable with it, but I'll be using Figma since it's completely free and it has a lot more features. Using Figma will also allow you to use my t-shirt creation mat, which I've designed to help us size our designs. You can download that for free using the link in the description. Now in Figma, we're gonna make two design boards. One is going to be a standard new design file, and we can just call this one designs. This is where we can drag in that creation map that we'll use for creating the t-shirt designs. Second is we'll make a Figma Jamboard. And this one we can just title ideas. That's all the setup. So now we can move into arguably the most important step, the product research. Since the overall t-shirt niche is highly competitive, we're gonna be looking for sub niches that are working right now today that are low competition, but still high demand. I use Etsy for my product research since all of the sales data is public. And we can start by finding designs by searching for something like graphic t-shirts. Now here we want to quickly identify successful shops. So we're looking at each listing to find this number that's right next to the shop name. This is the number of the total reviews that the shop has gotten. So the larger it is, the more successful that store has been. Then I can click on it and go to their shop page to see what they have going on. We can start grabbing ideas right from here, but I like scrolling to the bottom of the page where I can see this reviews section and I can filter them out by most recent. This is going to show me the listings that have been most recently reviewed by customers who have bought those items and then liked them enough to leave reviews on. This is the niche gold mine. Because here we can find all kinds of niche ideas that we can make designs for. So for example, pickleball or Valentine's Day, capybaras, math teachers, uh, pie day or fentanyl prevention. I don't think I would have thought of that one on my own. If I search for one of these niches like the capybara shirt, you can see that there's only 6,000 other results, which is basically no competition. The fentanyl shirt idea is, of course, even lower than that. If a niche has 10,000 results or less on Etsy, it's a very low competition niche for t-shirts. Most of the products are going to be super low quality that nobody's gonna wanna buy, or they're going to be products that aren't even relevant to the search. So if it's 10,000 or less, we'll have an easy time getting sales in that niche. Now with our broad idea, we have to find individual best-selling listings within our sub niche. In small niches like the capybara niche, any listing with more than 10 reviews is going to be good. Now, if they have a lot more reviews than that, then you'll definitely want to save it. Remember that for every review, the item has likely sold about eight to 10 times. I'll save it by copying the link to the listing and then going into my Figma Jamboard and just pasting it in. Here, I can also add some notes underneath it if I want to. Now, as our store grows, it'll be easier and easier to compete in bigger niches, but until then, we'll start smaller. Of course, we could use a paid research tool like Allura, 
where we can analyze the top shops on Etsy. Here I can filter out these top shops to see which ones are selling clothing. And then when I choose one, I can come down and filter out all of their top listings by most popular this month. So these are going to be the listings that are selling right now today. Allure is a paid tool and it does make research faster, but at the end of the day, the results you get are going to be about the same. We wanna go through and save as many best-selling listings as possible from all kinds of niches. The more designs we save, the more successful we can be. Remember that nobody really cares what designs you like. We're making designs for them. So by making designs for every niche, we'll have the best chances of actually getting sales and growing a successful t-shirt shop. At this point, we should have a list of low competition niches that are currently selling, which means we're ready to start designing. We'll pick one of those niches to create a batch of several designs for. Because let's be honest, the chances that you make one design and it becomes a bestseller are pretty low. Assuming that we're not going to be selling strictly image-only designs and they will have some text in them, we'll need to get some ideas for the sayings and there's three methods that we can use to do that. First, I can cross-reference sayings from other popular designs into our own unique sayings. So for example, this shirt says coffee and corgis. So we could have one that says coffee and capybaras. This one says easily distracted by cats. So we could do easily distracted by capybaras. Second method is we could come up with our own obvious original sayings. So we could say something like, I love thing and capybaras or capybaras are my spirit animal. The third option is we can use chat GPT and ask it for a list of trademark free sayings based around our idea and we should get a fairly large list of ideas that we can use. Now with our list of ideas, we're ready to start designing, except that we have to make sure to stay out of legal trouble. So we have to do a quick copyright check so we don't waste a bunch of time creating designs. We can visit this website, which is the official trademark office here in the US to check for registered trademarks. All I have to do is enter the saying that I want to sell and then hit enter to see if there's any filings. Now, usually for these really small, specific niches, there aren't going to be any filings. But if there is a match, it'll look something like this. Now, with our list of sayings and all of the hard work out of the way, we can start assembling our designs. There are four methods that we can use to do this, starting with method number one, handcrafted designs. We're going to make our own unique designs, but in order to do that, we have to take what someone else has already cooked up just add a little bit of sauce to it. If we look at some of our ideas, we can notice some elements inside the best-selling listings that are saved. So for example, I could pick out this font and maybe I like these colors or the alignment to this side, just the design aspects or design elements. Then I just have to put it all together. In Figma, over my creating mat, I'm going to press T and here's where I can just type out my saying in the text box. Now, the very first thing that we'll want to do is probably just change the font. So we can come over here on the side and look through all of the font options. We can also filter these out by the commercially free to use Google fonts. Of course, we can install more fonts on our computer and they'll show up in Figma, but just to get started, there's more than enough options here. Since we already have an idea of what works, let's just go for a similar looking font. Then all that's left is to resize the graphic and position it so that it'll look nice and have good proportions on a t-shirt. Handcrafted designs don't have to be complicated to work. Some of the best selling designs are simple text designs. All I have to do is type out a saying, give it a nice looking font, add some stylizing magic to it, and make it more likely to sell. The key with print on demand is to make a lot of designs for every niche since we don't know exactly what's going to sell. I can copy and paste the same design with the saying that we just made and create a second variation with different fonts and different styling. And I can do this over and over until I can't come up with any more styles. Where these handcrafted designs start to get really cool and even easier to make is when we have some styles that look good we can simply change out the sayings for other similar sayings that target completely different niches. There are same designs just reused as a sort of template, 
so that we're not starting over from complete scratch each time we wanna go make designs. Figma makes this really easy to do. So for each design we make, we're essentially making dozens of future designs. Even though simplicity works, and this is usually the fastest way to make bestsellers, some people still view handcrafted designs as the hardest to make. So if that's you, a little bit of an easier method is to make AI generated designs. The goal here is to make designs that don't look AI generated. Just like with handcrafted designs, we need to be able to spot elements in best selling listings that are currently working. With the recent AI updates, the images that we can generate are completely insane. There's a bunch of free or cheap AIs that we can use like Leonardo AI, but I still use Midjourney to generate all of my designs. It's honestly the best one out right now as far as quality and control and it's only about $10 a month. The mid-journey setup is super easy. We'll just head to their website and click on join the beta, and this will prompt us to join their free Discord server. From here, I wanna click on add a server, create my own for me and my friends, and I'm gonna title this T-shirt designs, and then just click create. Then back in the mid-journey server, I'm gonna click on the mid-journey bot, hit add app, and then choose that t-shirt design server that we just made. Now, before we go just creating a bunch of designs, we have to tune our mid-journey settings so that we get the best possible images for t-shirts. I'll type out forward slash settings and it'll open up this menu. First, I just wanna select mid-journey model version six. And then I wanna set the stylization to high. Now you can play around with other settings, but I've found these to be the most effective for making t-shirts. Maybe we want to create our own versions of some of these best-selling designs. How would we do that? First, we could obviously start by trying to write our own prompt. So I can start by typing out forward slash imagine, followed by a description of the type of design that I wanna make. So this Monstera leaf design that's sold really well for the niche it's in, I think that the AI version of it came out quite nice as well. And for my literal first try, I don't think these are that bad at all. Now from here, I can simply upscale one of the images and then upscale it again so that it's large enough and high enough quality to print on t-shirts. Then I can just save this upscaled file to a folder on my computer to use in my designs. But we can modify our prompts to get even better designs for our t-shirts. Let's say that I wanted to make designs for the capybara niche. So instead of just trying to write out the perfect prompt, I could come to Midjourney's website and then search for the word capybara. Now here, as I scroll through, if I find an image that I like, such as this yoga capybara, I can view the entire prompt that was used to generate it. So then I can just copy this prompt and I can use it to try and generate my own image. Here's what a lot of people aren't doing. See, I can right click on the original image and hit copy link address. Then I can paste this at the beginning of my prompt. It'll basically use that starting image as the canvas for when it's generating your design and the results are way better. I can use this prompting strategy to make a ton of designs that are already proven to work. This succulent design, easy to do with AI. These watercolor pumpkins that have made hundreds of sales, also super easy to do with AI. A UFO sucking up a Bigfoot, that's a lot more complex, but luckily it's a lot easier to do with AI. Now these designs look great, but we still have to turn the file into something that's usable. We can't just slap the image on a shirt. If the image has a white background on it, we can usually upload it to a website like Icons 8 Background Remover, and it'll do a really good job of removing this blank background. Then I can just save the file and put it back in my Figma board ready to use in designs. Alternatively, if your designs are a little bit more complex, we'll need to use a free website called Vectorizer. So we can upload our image and this will convert it into a vector graphic. Then I can take that converted file and just put it into my Figma board. Because it's a vector, I can come to the side and select the colors that I wanna remove and simply delete them from my image. I could also recolor other parts of the graphic as needed. Now we have ready to use graphics that were made using AI. That's still several steps though to get a finished design. So if you're looking for something a little bit faster, you could try method number three, buying pre-made designs. 
This is a great strategy, especially after you've made a few sales and you're ready to start reinvesting. The reason that buying designs work so well is because we can buy the exact same best selling designs that other shops are using and sell them in our own shop. There's no copyright infringement since the creator of the design is selling us the right to sell the image again. Even though it might look like there's a lot of competition for specific designs, new shops are still able to pop on the scene and using the same design, get some sales. For example, these two listings sell the exact same design just on different mockups. And this shop sells the exact same design on a different product entirely. And all three of them have made good sales. This strategy mostly depends on the packaging, which is everything outside of the design, like the mock-up. So if the design is proven to work, we can just package it a little bit differently and sell it in our shop. To find these best-selling designs, we can literally search for the name of the design and we can probably find the exact same source file. So again, when we find one, we'll just have to double check that it's print on demand approved and they haven't banned that because some sellers will. And after that, we can just buy it for a couple bucks. If you're having trouble finding it, but you think it's a pre-made design, you can always right click on the image and do a reverse image search to see where else that image appears on the internet. We can then buy the design for a couple of dollars, save it and use it in one of our own listings. It's as simple as that. Now, hands down the most efficient method to guarantee that you'll get sales on your t-shirts is to use method number four, a hybrid strategy. Well, you could just focus on one design method. The entire point is to make as many designs as possible. Instead of just focusing on one design strategy, why not use them all? We can craft simple text designs, make some AI art, make some AI art and text designs, buy some pre-made designs online. And by doing this for each niche that we target, we'll have a great chance of actually getting sales because we'll have a large, diverse catalog of product designs targeting each niche. This is exactly what I did, and it helped me scale my print-on-demand business into the millions. Hybrid designs also allow you to do something extra powerful when targeting customers called double niching. Double niching it means that we can target customers who like two completely unrelated things. For example, taco shirts and Valentine's shirts are both highly competitive, but Valentine's Day taco shirts aren't. So maybe a customer is buying a gift for their spouse and their first search that they put in is a Valentine's Day shirt. If they don't find anything, they might then remember that their spouse loves tacos. So they'll search for a taco shirt. Etsy will remember both searches and then combine and curate the search results to show that customer relevant products. This can be difficult to nail, but when you do and your product shows up, the customers are gonna go straight for it. Designs like this also make it easy to switch out interests and target all kinds of people. Using these design methods, you'll be able to create dozens, hundreds, or even thousands of designs, which will actually create you two issues. Number one is getting all of those great designs that you've made onto the products that you're selling. Now, I always recommend using Printify to sell your t-shirts online. They're the fastest, highest quality, and lowest cost print provider out there, and I've been using them to run my print-on-demand businesses for the last few years. The thing about it is, it takes quite a while to choose the product that you're selling, upload your design to it, reposition and size your design, save the t-shirt, and give it a title that makes sense, and then repeat that for every single design that we've made. It used to take forever, but now you'll have access to my Printify product uploader, which enables you to automatically upload all of those designs that you've created to the t-shirts that you're selling. Pre-named, pre-sized, with all of your colors, descriptions, pricing details, and settings saved. It's the biggest time saver and I invested over $20,000 to get this program built. And it's available to you for the low price of clicking subscribe. You can download it using the link below. Issue number two is that you'll need to get your designs to actually sell. And the way that you set yourself up for success is by placing your designs on best-selling mock-ups. To solve this issue, since it does take quite some time to make mock-ups, I released the mock-up script which allows you to automatically generate hundreds of mockups without any user input. You can step away from your computer completely. You can even run the mockup script and the uploader at the same time 
automating two of the most time-consuming tasks. Again, available completely for free. Connect with me on Instagram and Discord, and please hit subscribe if this video was helpful. And as always, 